Welcome to the Plant Based Podcast. In case you didn't know already, plants are amazing. You can eat them, wear them, drink them, nourish your skin with them, grow them, love them, and be inspired by them. So, why not join us on the Plant Based Podcast as we speak to the movers, shakers, and growers in this amazing plant world? This week's episode is all about well-being and one big virtual celebration of gardening on the 10th of May. Yes, it is Garden Day, supported by Candide, the app for plant lovers. Um, And just because we are in the middle of a pandemic doesn't mean we can't get our green fingers going because gardening has definitely not been cancelled. So it will be time to down your tools, pop on a flower crown and take time out to celebrate the positive effects of gardening and in this podcast you will be able to find out much more about how you can celebrate virtually loads of ideas and tips from Michael and at the end I will give you some information on how to get involved on social media and where to find out some more information so coming up first of all I'm going to be talking about well-being and plants and nature. Hi everyone, this podcast is hopefully going to give you all of the good gardening vibes as I talk about gardening and nature for well-being and Michael discusses Garden Day coming up, promoting how beneficial gardening is for everyone. And as many of you will already know, gardening for well-being is at the heart of everything I do. And one reason why I do that is because I have experienced the incredible benefits that plants provide both physically and mentally myself, but also through working with many others to discover just how being with and understanding the natural world can literally change the way that we live. So starting with the big and beautiful planet that we live on, a planet that gives us life to every single living organism on this earth. So from animals and fish to humans to plants and, of course, viruses. Absolutely everything. And each one of us are part of that big, amazingly wonderful ecosystem that keeps our earth spinning. When you think about it, it's almost magical. And I am super pleased to see how recently in the press, in the media and at gardening shows that gardening and well-being has been headlining a little bit more. Um, Obviously, there's been a push for it at recent gardening shows. And also during these times of uncertainty, it's this connection between humans and the planet that has been lost and for many needs to be rediscovered to allow all species on this planet to truly thrive. And for us all to be able to find some kind of balance between modern living and the natural world. And of course, that connection with our natural world has been even more important during times of lockdown and isolation. And it's been actually really heartwarming to see so many more people interested in growing their own food, enjoying the gardens. I've seen loads of posts on social media of people saying, wow, I went for a walk today and I've never seen this field, you know, full of rapeseed, but I've lived here for 10 years, you know. So it's really nice to see people making that connection. However, I would potentially reword connect with nature or we often use reconnect with nature because actually we are nature and remembering that is what I believe is the key to truly thriving together on this planet. So there's many, many ways we can feel this wonderful relationship between us and the planet. One way is forest bathing. 
And we know that being amongst trees is good for our health. And don't worry, it doesn't mean that you have to go outside amongst trees in your swimming costume or <laughs> your bathing suit. It just means taking a walk amongst trees for health benefits. Uh, it can ease stress and anxiety. There's some studies showing that it can actually regulate blood sugar levels for people who are non-dependent on insulin um, and are diabetic. We found that it's particularly good for the physiological and psychological health of children. Uh, it's very, very good for improving focus and clarity of mind. Um, and there's just m so many benefits to being amongst trees. So you probably already know that I am a big lover of hugging trees. I am a proud tree hugger. And there's evidence to show how being in contact with trees can help to bring our bodies into balance. And that's part of what earthing is all about and it's a really great way to connect ourselves because trees work really hard to keep us alive so I think they deserve a big hug and a thank you anyway. So another way to earth is uh, walking uh, with bare feet. It's quite liberating actually to throw your socks off and walk outside on the lawn and if you get the chance and it's not too cold just doing that in your garden in the morning time when you have your morning cuppa just breathing and letting the soles of your feet touch the earth. It's a great way to start the day. It's a great way to balance the electrons in your body, you're receiving a natural negative charge. Really very good for you. Uh, and another way, of course, is to put your hands on the ground. So if you're outside, if you're having a picnic or you're just sitting at the park, when you're allowed to do that, just put your hands down on the ground and you'll be receiving that lovely natural negative charge that the planet provides us with. So did you actually know that the planet is the equivalent of a six sextillion tonne battery that's on constant charge by the sun, by uh, lightning storms and by the hot core? It's a fascinating process that we really mustn't forget about. We must maintain that connection by remembering that we are part of all of that. So even paddling in the sea is a great way to earth yourself and balance your body as well. So, uh, of course, the other way to discover the abundance of well-being benefits that can help us and the planet thrive is, of course, gardening. And hopefully lots of you listening to this are already gardeners. And if you're not, then gardening can just provide so many benefits. So here's some great stats and facts for you, first of all. So according to a recent survey carried out by Candide, 96% of people said they felt happier when spending downtime in their gardens, with 94% stating that they wish they'd spent more time in a garden. Absolutely. I couldn't spend enough time in the garden, really. I would be there all of the time and camp out there if I could. 74% <laughs> felt happier in their gardens than when watching TV. I definitely couldn't agree more with that. And the results showed the most popular ways for people to spend downtime in their gardens included sitting quietly in a favourite spot and admiring their most beautiful plants, listening to birdsong and watching the wildlife. I love that breathing in fresh air and the scents of the garden. Of course, fragrance can provoke many different emotions and can very much relax us. And enjoying a cuppa and a chat with others in the garden. Let's not forget, gardens are also for sharing. And having a quiet bite to eat alone. So not only are gardens for sharing, but they are also really nice for spending some time on your own and relaxing. So... These survey results that were uh, found by Candide are backed up by many studies across the world that have not only shown it's not just the aesthetics of plants, which of course can promote happiness within us, but just being in a garden can lower stress levels, it can raise our self-esteem, can ease anxiety and depression, along with other studies showing a decreased risk of cardiovascular diseases, Alzheimer's, it lowers your stroke risk, plus it can help to regulate our immune systems, it's good for our bone health. That really is just to name a few, there are so many more. 
<laughs> and there are many reasons why these benefits can be seen and felt. You know, we, as we garden, we're exposed to good bacteria in the soil, which is so great for our health and immune system. We can focus when we want to. So focusing on sowing seeds and thinning out and potting on, hardening off and planting out. That's a lovely mindful process. It gives us hope. It's also about taking time out so you can relax. But it's also about exercise so you can kind of pump it up when you get some digging going as well. It can be alone time. It can be as part of a community and not forgetting that when we garden, we learn so much. So as a gardener, you have to be a scientist. You have to be a mathematician. You have to understand some geography. I'm sure I'm not the only one, am I, who studies the clouds or changes in the weather. And I'm constantly looking at weather wraps to check whether I need to shut the greenhouse door, whether I need to bring my seeds in or not. And we, of course, can even learn a few Latin words as well. So, of course, plant names teach us about another language, the language of gardening. <laughs> so let's not forget the all-important connection is with wildlife as well. So just sharing and caring for a garden where wildlife thrives is incredibly satisfying. I mean, just watching the robins and you can even train robins to come, train or um, just make them uh, kind of come onto your hand to feed off you. So it's about them trusting you rather than you training them. But blackbirds pottering around underneath your feet as you're digging because they're looking for the worms and just watching the bees buzzing around the flowers that you've planted that, and then they're pollinating your wonderful vegetables. That whole process is just beautifully satisfying and helps us to feel a connection and what our place is on the planet as well. And gardening can give you that. So it's simply a whole bundle of goodness. So carry on enjoying your garden, everyone, or your patio or your balcony to your heart's content. And of course, even if you don't have your own space to garden, there are many ways to grow inside. So from house plants, which help to clean the air, to microgreens, which are easy to grow and full of nutrition, um, and when possible, you could even join in at a local community gardening project, which is also great for socialising and learning about gardening as well. There's many things you can do inside that still help you connect with plants. Things like aquascaping, so that's landscaping underwater. So think about beautiful um, fish tanks, but you don't even need fish in them if, the, if you don't want. There's so much that you can do. So gardening is about being alone. It's about being with other people. It's about focusing. It's about exercising. So many benefits. So good for our well-being. So everyone, I hope that you are enjoying your garden at the moment. And I hope that this has helped you to think about your connection with everything that you do when you're outside in your garden. Wow, can you hear that bird song? It's really, really wonderful, isn't it? Uh, thanks, guys. Um, Ellen's just done a really fab intro into the concept of Garden Day. As some of you know, I'm convalescing at home because I've been in hospital very recently. Not with the dreaded C, but with kind of back issue and a bit of an infection. So you're getting a much slower version of Michael today, but that is almost a bit of a joy for some of you, I'm sure. So my involvement in the podcast today is to give you a bit more info on how you can get involved with Garden Day this year. Garden Day 2020 is looking like it's going to be one of the biggest ever virtual garden get-togethers. So there's a lot of different ways that you can get involved at home. We want you to then share those pictures on social media. If you're feeling up to making a flower crown as well, you can wear that in your pictures too. I'll be looking out on the day to see what is what you guys are getting up to. So I had a few ideas of what you could do. Firstly, 
you could get out in your own garden with members of your household, perhaps have a little picnic, a little hangout, maybe identify some of those flowers that you've been meaning to identify for ages. Share your gardening skills with the other members in your household, maybe inspire them to get more engaged with the flowers that are out there. Also, balconies. You could be lucky enough to have a balcony. Get out there, spend some time with your flowers, perhaps preen them, look after them, give them a watering as well, because this time of year, we need to water our balcony flowers in order to give them that that real kind of head start on things as well. Another idea is perhaps to share garden day with your neighbours. Now, obviously at a social distance, but how about having a doorstep cup of tea with your neighbours, kind of, you know, sharing your front gardens as well. I'm sure it's a very much more of a neighbourly feel in your local area at the moment. Maybe sit on your doorstep rather than hanging out and hiding at the back of the house. Much nicer. Or how about video calling a friend and sharing either your indoor plants, your house plants, or your garden and giving each other a bit of a tour of your actual gardens. You could even do that as an Instagram Live and do that as a split screen. Or you could simply hang out with your houseplants indoors and actually come this Sunday, that's what I will be doing myself. So I'll be making sure they're all topped up with water, taking off the yellow leaves, maybe even singing them a bit of a song as well. And I'll actually be holding a bit of a houseplant party on my Instagram. So if you look on my Instagram live at about 11 a.m. on Garden Day, on the Sunday, I will be holding a bit of a houseplant party. And I'll be wearing a flower crown myself, but a very new style of flower crown. So tune in on the day and you'll see what I'm up to. But we've mentioned flower crowns a bit and they are really an integral part of Garden Day. And if you are going to take part, then we really urge you to have a bit of fun, get a bit creative and make yourself a flower crown. Now, there's some really great guides on the Garden Day website, also on my own website, Mr. Plant Geek, that show you how to make these flower crowns. They don't have to be high tech. It could be that you refashion an old clothes hanger or perhaps uh, make up a ring with some foil from your kitchen drawer and actually then hook different types of flowers, leaves onto there and create your own flower crown. It's really, really fun to do. Have a look online to find those different guides. But how to share your pictures on Garden Day? Well, you can use the hashtag Garden Day UK in order to see what other people are up to and also share what you've got up to on the day. And that's either on Instagram, Twitter or Facebook as well. And I'm sure the Garden Day team will be looking out to see what you have got up to. There's also going to be a full program of events on a dedicated Zoom channel, which is being held by Garden Day. And we're just waiting for the timetable to come through on that. So we will add the link into the episode notes when we can. So I hope you choose to get involved with Garden Day this year. There's a number of different ambassadors that have also pledged to get involved this year. And we're now going to hear from those, hear what they're up to and what they think of the benefits of spending time in the great outdoors or, of course, the great indoors because all you need is one houseplant in order to celebrate Garden Day 2020, the biggest virtual gardening get-together ever. I'll see you there. I'm Marianne. And I'm Camilla. We run Wolves Lane Flower Company, which is a micro flower farm based in Wood Green, North London. We farm on um, we farm on about a third of an acre outside. Collectively, we've kind of got a, bare, a, a series of plots that we've um, managed to turn into space for cultivating flowers, and we have a forty meter glass house. So we both grew up having um, families that loved gardening and being outside. Um, Although both of us left university and, and went to work in production, I worked in theatre, Camilla worked in fashion, so we had very desk-based jobs, but um, about three years ago made took the plunge and um, began 
our small business and so we're really lucky now that we get to spend every day outside um, grappling with with our, with the weeds and the aphids um, but I think for us gardening feels like a real sanity activity wouldn't you say yeah it's a real lifeline especially at the moment because um, you know we're very lucky that we are allowed to still do our jobs on site and, and we both still have um, our own personal gardens at home and gardening it, gardening if anything is constantly looking to the future like everything that you do um, gardening wise um, or horticulture wise is not for immediate benefit you're not you're not going to get immediate gratification it's always like six months or 12 months ahead and if there was ever a time to be sort of looking to the future and preparing for the future it, it feels like now's a good time I think also it's a great time to just be tidying up your garden it's easy to sit inside and look out and think it all looks like a total mess but even spending half an hour of just tidying up the the lines of where your beds are cutting things back um making things look just spruced up and, and giving everything a spring clean just can immediately make such a big difference um i've just done that in my own garden which is a north facing tiny tiny little um rectangle it doesn't get very much light but i've just re-mulched where the path is and weeded around the patio and in all the um, paving cracks and it's just made it look 100% better and now I actually like sitting outside. So obviously um, Garden Day is coming up on the 10th of May. Um, We were going to have a very big celebration um, on site, a community facing free um, event for um, people that live in our neighbourhood which was going to be great but hopefully we'll be doing that later on in the year. Um, but we'll be doing things in our own gardens, in our own allotments, and we'd really invite you guys um, to join. Um, Obviously, Garden Day is all about downing tools, um, really enjoying any outdoor space you've got. If you haven't got a garden, it's fine. Um, You know, I used to live in a flat where I only had window boxes, and they still brought me a lot of joy. Um, But we will probably um, be doing something virtual. (laughs) Yes, I think we'll probably um, do a, a Zoom call or a Skype with family. Um, we'll, my parents have been brilliant. They have, a, they have an, um, a lovely garden and we've been doing kind of virtual walks because I can't go and visit them at the moment. We've been, they've been walking down the garden and showing me everything that's growing. So we'll definitely do that again. And um, I think for us, it's... it's it's a funny time this year because actually if we had been organising our event for Garden Day we probably would have had very little opportunity to to literally down tools because we would have been so busy organising the event so actually for us this year it is a real moment to take a pause in the season this is a really busy time of year for gardening you're kind of battling against loads of weeds coming up um everything is beginning to grow like mad and it's it's really easy to just be in the garden and constantly be um be be working all the time but garden day is a brilliant point in the year to to sit down and just take stock and enjoy enjoy the garden as it looks at that time because there's always something nice to um, and beautiful to enjoy in the garden so um we'd encourage everyone to to sit down and um just call call up friends and family and um see what they're doing for garden day you know the the, the amazing thing about gardening is that the the job list is never done there's always something to do so you might as well take one day just to relax eat cake eat cake you know have a cup of tea or a glass of wine (laughs) make make a flower crown if, if if you like and just really um yeah enjoy enjoy your garden your outdoor space and and connect um with your friends and loved ones Hello there, my name is Anne-Marie Powell and I run a garden design practice, a studio of four called Anne-Marie Powell Gardens where we're lucky enough to design gardens large and small up and down the country for individuals and companies and schools, charities and children's hospices. 
So I do get around because I'm just in love with horticulture and gardens. I've been lucky enough to be doing this for 25 years now and I still enjoy it just as much as I did when I got my very first garden when I was about 21. Um, I'm so looking forward to spending time together with um, friends and family by holding a garden party on Sunday the 10th of May and I have a very good reason to down tools. Just when we entered lockdown, I decided that the time was right as I was spending more time working from home to actually undertake getting my own garden up to scratch. We had the builders in last year, so our garden was used pretty much as a dumping ground. And now is the time to get it ship shape. It's a personal project and I set up a live Instagram uh, lunchtime feed every single day where I'm chatting to others as I make over my own garden in real time to keep motivated, keep connected and to keep on growing. So Sunday the 10th of May, I won't be lifting a finger. It's been hard graft, digging and lifting and basically just getting those bodies of ours, me and my partner, moving. Um, We have got a garden gym here at the moment. So I'm going to spend time with the new community at At My Real Garden, just maybe raising a glass and just celebrating nature, the wonderful connection we have, um, the gorgeous sense of well-being um, gives to all of us in these very very tricky time and just to enjoy and smell the roses for a while thank you very much and enjoy your day too hello i'm jonathan mosley and i'm known as a floral designer or to many people a florist And my job really is being creative with flowers, traveling around the country, presenting demonstrations, talks, and doing large scale floral installations at many of the UK's leading shows. For me, my garden is a working environment and I use it to grow many special flowers and plants that I can then cut and get creative with afterwards. Nature and floristry and gardening, to me, they're all interlinked, intertwined, and they offer countless forms of inspiration. Garden Day on Sunday the 10th of May will be a luxurious day for me because I intend to relax and actually enjoy the garden rather than be working out there in it. Always there's a job to do if you have a garden and in a working environment, of course, you have to keep on top of it. So it provides those countless flowers and pieces of foliage. But during garden day, I want to escape to a secluded corner, read a book under the shade of a tree when hopefully it will be sunshiny or alternatively enjoy a glass of wine and a few nibbles and perhaps soak up the sun if it is there to to be enjoyed. I enjoy just looking at the garden, watching the birds fluttering in the trees, hearing their different tweets and sounds, looking at nature that's around the garden because my garden is not just my space, it's there to share with everybody and everything. Sadly this year we'll be isolated on garden day and we'll have to share it all virtually so I want to invite my friends and family into the garden with me via social media links and current technology so they too can share the beauty of the plants and the flowers that are around us. It's a proven fact that being in the garden offers a serenity and a calmness and being around green plants or flowering plants, it's good for our well-being and it certainly reduces stress levels. I only have to walk into the garden and I feel all the pressures of work and all the anxiety just instantly disappear and move away. So being in the garden, it's good for us, it's beneficial for us. And if you don't have a garden, then it doesn't matter. Be in any pleasant space that's outdoors, any green space, be on your balcony, be on your roof terrace, sit on your doorstep and have a few plant pots around you, or certainly be indoors surrounded by some of the amazing houseplants that are out there. Just being next to any form of living, growing piece of plant material is going to make you feel so much better. So enjoy garden day, celebrate, put on a flower crown, make something wild and wacky and creative. Wearing flowers makes people smile. So put a smile on everybody's face on Sunday the 10th of May during garden day. (laughs) 
We hope you've all enjoyed listening to this episode. There's some great ambassadors for Gardening Day, isn't there? And we are super happy to have such amazing guests on the podcast as well. You know, gardening has always been, but perhaps even more so now, a way to celebrate, a way to connect and enjoy the world of plants. So this Garden Day may be different to usual, but let's all pull together and make it the biggest virtual Garden Day of all time. And to do that, Candide, who are supporting Garden Day, the app for plant lovers, are asking us all to share what we are doing in the run up to Garden Day and on Garden Day on social media. So you can find out more by visiting gardenday.co.uk backslash get involved. You can follow at Garden Day UK on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and Candide and share your Garden Day celebrations on social media using hashtag Garden Day UK. We hope you have an amazing Garden Day. We can't wait to see what you've been up to and Michael and I will most definitely be wearing our flower crowns. <laughs> The theme music for the plant-based podcast is an excerpt from the song Grow by Mikey James and our editing is done by Gareth Patch of Semi-Echo.